live chat. We're here. I'm back. I'm going to give the world of YouTube a minute to let people know that I'm here. And I can't believe that I'm actually back. It's been a while. It's been a it's been a really long minute. Um well, it looks like it's quite possible I will be flying solo. Hey, Jamie! Jamie's here. Okay, you're all showing up. It, sometimes it takes a minute. Oh, please. For John's here. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Seth. Hi, everybody. I love it. Told you I'd be here. I just love you, Jamie. What a, what a journey we've been on this year, huh? Hi, everybody. Oh, John's here. Fletch is here. WWE Motors. Meow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Mike. I love this. I love it. I love it. Oh, Christina, I saw your question. We will, we will get to it. Hi, everybody. How are you? Oh, my goodness. It's so good to see everybody here. I have a light blasting my face over here. Give me one second to adjust it because it's kind of getting in my glasses and it's driving me a little crazy. And I'm back because nobody in their right mind needs that much light on their face. Uh, yes, an epic journey. Oh my goodness. Hey, Geeked Out Turtle fans. How are you, my friend? Allie, yes, I was in New Jersey last month. Joseph Campbell. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Well, I, I am so excited to be back. Um, I have to say that I have been hearing from people. Hi Marlon. Um, at comic cons that I have been doing this year, how much you guys have missed these beautiful times that we get to share together. And, um, oh my gosh, I, just so you guys know, I love going back and reading your comments and finding out, um, more, have they told you to come to Detroit? Not yet. Um, but I would love to. Motor City is a great comic con, but I do, um, go back and read them because I, you know, what's been so cool is that for those of you that are new, I've been doing wake up Wednesday for I don't know, maybe a couple of years. I'm a little spotty and sporadic about it. Um, I tried to do a schedule. It kind of didn't work for me. I may move into more of a schedule as the year goes on. I'm just not quite sure yet. But um, this has been an opportunity. It happened. It kind of came out of COVID. And, um, <laughs> um, and I really felt like we we all needed a chance to connect. We all needed a chance to maybe be inspired a little bit. We needed a chance to just like be with other people and what started to happen and has happened, which I love. Hello guys. Hi, Terry Knuckles. Um, is that you guys have been so cool to each other in comments um, I love, love, love when I get to meet, when somebody comes up to me at a Comic-Con and says, I've been following you for a while. And sometimes I know exactly who they are because they commented on here. Um, oh, I love it. Thank you, Geeked Out Turtles. Um, uh, it's a wonderful place for people to connect with each other. I love the way that you talk to each other. I love how kind you are. Hi, Scottish Isaac from Vancouver. Um, I just love it. And um, so these came out of my feeling like we all needed a little more connection with each other and that this time on planet Earth is just a huge wake up. We're waking up to so many things. It could be I'm waking up to I need better relationships, you know, I need a higher quality of friendship with my friends. I need um, to be closer to my family. I need to move away from my family. I need to, I'm waking up to, I don't really love my job and it's time for me to start something else. I mean, how many people do we know that 
have lost their jobs, left their jobs. The other thing that's been huge in these last, you know, couple of years has been loss. Um, I, I, and I'm going to get into it for a second in, in just a little bit, but I mean, I've had a tremendous amount of loss and, um, and I know that the amount of loss that I've had is a fraction to what some of you have had to sustain, have had to live with, have, have been some, some folks in the last couple of years have just been pummeled and pummeled and pummeled by things that have happened. And I contend that all of these things as tragic, as difficult, as much as it feels like you're just being beaten up by life. I believe that it's here as a wake up call. It's here for us to grow into the next biggest, best part of our lives. I, I can tell you, I, I, so you guys know I'm very open about my age. I just had my 60th birthday in June and I feel like I have, I feel like I'm moving into one of the sweetest parts of my life. I feel like because I've been a student of life, of living, a student of philosophy, a student of literature, a, a student of friendships. I have been taking a lot of notes in the course of the last 60 years. And I feel like one of the things that has really been a blessing to me is that as an empath, I have a tremendous intuition that just seems to be fine tuning and fine tuning and fine tuning. And one of the things that keeps happening at Comic Cons that I love, and when I'm out in the world as well, is when people come up to me and I'm just feel this very strong message come in that I'm just supposed to share. And um, oftentimes people say that that's exactly what they needed to hear. I don't feel that necessarily, some of it is my own wisdom, but I feel like some of it is just like, hi, download from the universe. You're standing in front of me and um, apparently there's a message in the field and it's coming in right now and it's for you. It's never intentional. It's always like an irresistible urge, but it's one of the sweet things because I feel like I've gotten to 60 and I, I know a couple of things. I also know that the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. So I've said this before, you've all heard it. I am a lifelong learner. I am somebody who's very committed to my personal growth and also to being of service on planet Earth today where I think we need as many people putting all the positive love, vibes, thoughts, actions, into the world that we can because we are so polar polarized we are so divided and i am literally committed for better or for worse to being a bridge and to somehow finding the middle ground and it's not easy and it pisses people off and uh, 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 and it but it's just how i'm built and uh of what i feel like i could make some sort of of um, contribution to the world to at least try not to be part of the problem to maybe try to be part of the solution and of course we all have different beliefs on what those solutions and what those problems are um, so you haven't seen me in a while this has been a bit of a bear my dad died in February and it was devastating it was absolutely his time. Um, nonetheless, it's my dad. Um, we had a beautiful and very complicated relationship. And I was graced with many beautiful experiences that came out of that, including getting so much closer to my stepmother, feeling such a connection with my dad before he died, even though he was not fully conscious. Um, I, I didn't realize I would miss him 
as much as I do. Um, and I took some time because I knew I really needed it. And I, I have been so fortunate in my life because I am not somebody who has had a lot of loss. Not to say that I haven't had a challenging life because I absolutely have without question. And I think that's just a universal human experience. Our lives are challenging to us. In terms of losing people, I just haven't lost that many yet. Um, I have lost people the, like mom, dad, siblings, best friends, God forbid, children, spouses, you know, um, it's a lot that so many of you go through. And I, when my dog died in 2021, is that right? The end of 2021. I knew he was prepping me for what would come next. And I was pretty sure it was going to be my dad. And I said, you know, I, if I could just be the person that my dog thought that I was, like really embody who he thought I was, and to look at other people the way that he did. My dog was absolutely unconditional in his love. And now that I've hit the ripe old age of 60, and I've had so many beautiful teachers in my life, who have shown me that the only path is unconditional love. It is the tallest order. It is the most challenging journey that you will go on, that I have gone on. And I am absolutely deeply committed to it because it feels like in a world that's divided, it's something that I can offer that actually would have some meaning. And it is so difficult because it means that you have to unconditionally love the people that you are opposed to, that you dislike. It does not mean, and to be very, very clear, it does not mean that you pardon or allow for behavior that is harmful. And I know that's a tough one because now words are harmful. Now, you know, we have a whole, there are many definitions of what harm is, of what danger is, of what violence is. So it's tricky. It's tricky. Um, but it is something that I believe if we all just tried to love each other more, that we would um, we'd have a better shot at kind of pulling this shit storm, <laughs> pulling this sinking ship out, you know, into calmer waters. Um, but the point of that is that I've learned is that you can't really unconditionally love other people until you learn how to unconditionally love yourself. The most challenging relationship that you will have is with yourself. You know, I am so blessed because I meet hundreds if not thousands of people a year when I go to Comic Cons. And I, you, anybody who's met me at a Comic Con knows that I, spend time with you guys. I want to know who you are. I'm going to be asking you questions about you, you, your life. And we have these exchanges that are so moving. And, you know, always there are people who come up and they're just flooded with tears. And I always know that there's a story there and I am there for it. You know, I, I am the here to hold the space for you to tell your story and to be seen. And I know that 
so, so many of the themes are people who are really struggling with themselves or people who really have um, such crippling self-esteem, who are so racked with guilt or pain or longing or, you know, are really struggling in their lives. And um, you know, the other day, it's so hokey. I'm a hokey person. Like I was thinking about this and I was kind of having a hard day and I played Whitney Houston's The Greatest Love of All. And then I played George Benson's The Greatest Love of All. Uh, part of that was we had a friend who was staying with us who was a musician who actually goes on tour with George Benson. And, you know, it's such a beautiful song. I use music sometimes to help me if I'm feeling a little like I need a boost. Um, and I was listening to that and it really is true. Like the very greatest love of all is the love that you have for yourself because what I own, what I possess, I can then give away. And it doesn't mean that I love myself all the time, that I've got this. It's an ongoing journey. But the more that I work on it with myself and the more that I am committed to at least trying to love and um, accept myself, I just find that just naturally, I am more willing to, um, to, oh my goodness, I'm seeing some of these comments that I'm more willing to be generous and compassionate and kind and unconditional with you. And you meaning my family, my friends, strangers, you know, in a weird way, I don't know if any of you feel this way, Sometimes it's nice, <laughs> it's easier to be nice to strangers than the people that we love. I remember a long time hearing Jane Fonda tell a story. She had a really contentious relationship with her father, Henry Fonda, who was also an actor, and how it used to kill her. Like, he was, her dad was so available for other people and could just have these intimate, conversations with total strangers on airplanes, but he couldn't do it with his own family and he couldn't do it with his own children. And she always felt like that was something that she really missed and was sad that she hadn't had and didn't get a chance to experience. And I, I kind of feel like we have the opportunity. I love that your father isn't really gone just out of sight. I do believe that's true. I do believe that's true. I also think like he's on his journey. Like, I don't know where that journey is taking him, but he, he, he moved on and I'm so blessed that I got to be there the moment that he did. And it was me and my stepmother and we had a transcendent experience and connected in a way that changed both of us. So I'm hearing from so many people that they're feeling isolated, they're feeling lost, they're feeling disconnected, they're not sure, you know, about life and where they're going. <sighs> And it just seems to be, I hear it from young people. I'm so, I am so blessed because I, I get, I have, I kind of hate kind of using the word fans because I feel like once we meet, we're, we're kind of friends, but it's the, when I get to meet you guys, hang on, I got a pillow behind my back. When I get to meet you guys, um, it's often because you, you you know who I am and, and you approach me and you all find you, we learn that I, I'm very approachable. <laughs> I'm pretty approachable um, because I'm a lover. I am, I am somebody who is really committed, you know, to 
to being unconditional and in, in how I go through the world. And I fail at it miserably some days. Please don't think like I've got this down and I'm perfect at it. I'm not. It's an ongoing process and I'm learning every day and I have days where I face plant and I have days where I feel really, really great. Um, but one of the things that I, I hear from people is kind of how, okay, so what I was gonna say was, I, I get to have fans who are young, 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 like little kids. I mean, a couple, about a month ago, I met these two little boys. They were little, little. And they were literally leaping out of their skin to meet me, which was just like, are you kidding me? I'm used to that when it's adults, you know, who maybe they grew up being huge Ninja Turtle fans or huge Halloween Town fans or whatever I've done in the past. Um, those seem to be the the biggest connectors, but people who've loved Nashville or or um, uh, uh, X Files or you know all kinds of things. Anyway, um, but then I'll get I have a lot of kids who who are who are like graduating from high school or graduating from college or maybe in their twenties or maybe in their thirties. And it just seems to me that right now so many people are just Cadillac man, right? I mean, all kinds of things I've done in the past. Um, hey, Dambo, thank you. Um, but it seems to be across the board, all ages for so many people. They just don't know where, oh, Big David Life, thank you. Hello from the Ukraine. Sending my love to the Ukraine, sending my love to everyone there. Um, so glad that you could be here. This is what's cool about, um, Facebook. No, where am I? YouTube. Sorry. Don't really love Facebook. Um, YouTube. Josh. Hi, love. Um, that's what's so cool about social media is that we do get a chance to be with each other from around the world. It's such an honor um, to, to be able to do that with each other. That wasn't always the way. My goodness. When I grew up, I had a black and white television. <laughs> I remember our first color TV, you know, I remember a push button phone. So I've been around for a while and seen a, seen a couple of things. Oh, TK Bar, hello my friend. Um, but anyway, it seems to be that a lot of people are feeling very lost these days. And I feel like that is very, very challenging, but also really, really purposeful. We have all been put in little boxes, you know? Like, you get put in these boxes. Oh, you're that, you're from there, this is your family, this is what you look like, here's your box. Oh, you like that thing, you do that, th oh, here's your little box. Everybody's been put in these little boxes and everybody's breaking their boxes, breaking the bounds, breaking the the paradigm, shattering their paradigms, the world has shattered paradigms of who and what you can be. And it's very challenging because we're used to being in the box and then the box is shattered or the bubble is burst or the lover leaves or somebody dies or you get fired, or you get sick, or you get lost, and you don't know what's next. And I think that it means it is the universe's way of sending you inside. I will say for sure one thing that I have learned is that inside is like, I feel like I was born with a toolbox. But over the years, I've been putting all these tools into and that there were secret compartments of things that are stored inside of my body that if I'm willing to get still, I'm willing to get quiet, I'm willing to be vulnerable, and I'm willing to feel that all kinds of things come to me. 
that I never anticipated. And that there is something called the dark night of the soul. And the dark night of the soul is when you're very, very lost and you don't know what is next and you can't see any light anywhere. And I believe that those are very important times. They're so painful. They're so difficult. And if you can be unconditional with yourself, if you could just try to hold your own hand and weather the storm, that on the other side of that is some understanding, is a paradigm shift that will lead you to where you want to go. I hope I'm not getting a little too out there for you guys, but these times of turmoil, we can either use them as times to go completely off the rails and disempower ourselves, or, yeah, as Daniel says, pain and struggle breeds greatness. Or we can use them to let them propel us to the next place in our lives that is really good for us. I mean, sometimes like when you look in the rear view mirror and you see something that happened to you a long time ago and it was like the worst thing. And then you realize like looking in the rear view mirror that if that thing hadn't happened, then this thing wouldn't happen. And then that wouldn't have happened. And then you wouldn't have gotten the job of your dreams or met the person that you love or moved to the place on the, in, you know, that new place that you wanted to live or meet that person or find that opportunity. And that we have a choice in how we're going to do this. We can either, and it's real basic, either the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. And we get a choice about that. And when you make that choice, it sort of sends you down a pathway. And I have found that if I'm, if I am willing to just kind of hang with myself and go inside and be quiet, that the answers will rise because those tools came with me. There's, there's things come up and help me. And, and the people that I need for this next stage of my journey just start showing up. But it means taking radical responsibility for my life, for the things that happen. I think one of the things that we're really seeing a lot of in the world is um, a, a, a blossoming of victim culture. It's a tough one because a lot of you know things, bad things happen to people. And though that is real and that is true. And what do we what do we do with it? You know, I've quoted this before, and I think it's a really powerful quote, which is, life works out the best for those who make the best of the way life works out. So there's the person whose house burns down, and they lose their job, and they get a serious illness, and they've lost everything, and they say, I, okay, like they accept what's going on. They accept the situation, difficult though it may be, not saying that it's fun, not saying that it's easy, and try to find a path through, like what's on the other side of this. Sometimes life comes in and burns your life down, so, or the universe comes in, or whatever it is that you believe in or don't believe in, but something happens and things get moved around, and oftentimes, with the glass half full point of view, it ends up working out better. And sometimes failure is more instructive than success. It's absolutely true. And if you go down the path, totally legitimate, absolutely your choice, you're completely allowed to do this, of glass half empty, then 
you are proceeding from the glass half empty point of view, which is everything is hard, everything is working against me. And it's like you get this, you get this energy going. Everything's working against me. Everything's working against me. Life never works out for me. Life never works. God, this always happens. Just wait for the other shoe to drop. Well, of course this happened. Look at my life. This always happens. And it's like you start building this momentum and this energy that starts propelling you, not in a direction that's going to make you happy. On the other side, I, you know, I have a sign in my hallway that says, Life is always working out for me. And I find, um, what is it? Somebody said there's a book, Fortunately, Unfortunately. Sounds good. It's like, fortunately, unfortunately. It's like, is it good? Is it bad? You get to decide that when I'm saying life is always working out for me, somehow this is going to work out. It does. It's like life is listening. It's like all the, <laughs> whatever's happening in the universe is listening. It doesn't mean that it's not challenging. It doesn't mean that I don't have to rise to the occasion. It doesn't mean that there are some days that I just belly flop and it sucks and it hurts and I just want to give up. And so on those days, you know, sometimes I can't get into that toolbox. Sometimes the toolbox feels like I can't get to any of these tools. And that's when I reach out. I reach out to a friend, I take a walk. Once again, I get quiet. If you get quiet with yourself, man. Yes, I know, the mind is very busy. Somebody this weekend was asking me about intrusive thoughts. You know, Christina was saying she she's getting into voiceover and how does she get out of her head? Quite frankly, it just takes some practice. It really does and yeah and 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 if you're a giver sometimes you know Jamie was just saying like she's given everything this summer and the tank is empty that's when you got to refill your tank that might mean laying on the couch watching mindless TV I find that doing things like listening to music that I find inspiring totally like I'm just I can't be a part of any of this I'm just gonna watch a stupid movie um I'm going to you know it's everybody has their own like what your bliss is you it maybe it's video games maybe it's getting a lot of sleep maybe it's taking uh you know going and finding a place to just get in the water somewhere whether it's the ocean a lake a pool a hose your tub um, something to just try to distract yourself out of those thoughts. But it, there is, you know, somebody was saying, you know, my intrusive thoughts, my intrusive thoughts. Question your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. I am not my thoughts. And now, yes, I just said, you know, glass half empty. What am I telling myself? I'm talking about the negative thoughts. I'm talking about the thoughts that are like wanting to piss all over everything. Those kinds of thoughts. The thoughts that are telling me that I can't do something. The, the, all the reasons why not. Those kinds of intrusive thoughts. I'm awful. I'm terrible. I'm, you know, for some people, I'm too fat. I'm too, I'm too dumb. I'm, I'm not beautiful enough. Or whatever your thoughts are. It's, I don't have enough money. I don't have a, they, some of that may be true. It's not going to get you to where you want to go. Those kinds of intrusive thoughts are the ones that it's good to take a moment. That's right. That's the ego talking. It really is the ego talking. It's trying to, the ego, man, that's a whole nother, oh my gosh, we're 34 minutes. That's a whole nother conversation. I can't say enough about setting a timer for two minutes and just trying to get quiet and just breathe for two minutes. If two minutes is too long, do a minute. Set a timer. Just breathe and then you're done. The, 
The crazy thing is, is just the act of breathing. Really like focusing on your breath, like that deep breath, fill up your belly, bring it all the way up, hold like you can count, like one, two, three, four, five, really fill it up, hold it for just a second. Let it all out. Do that for two minutes. You are going to find your heart rate. If somebody took your pulse, it would be slightly less pulsy. It would not be as rapid. If you can do that, set a timer. Do two minutes. Do it once a day. Do it once a week. You will find that that quiet, that solitude, that meditative state, will literally begin to transform your life. It does. It's crazy. And it will help stop those intrusive thoughts. And sometimes if you're having intrusive thoughts, I was just telling somebody the other day, who's really having a hard time um, in life, like write it out. Julia Cameron wrote a great book called The Artist Way, and she does something called she, she encourages people to do morning pages. Morning pages are three pages you write in like a 79 cent composition book that you get at a drugstore or Target or something like that. And you just write all those thoughts out first thing in the day. All those intrusive, get them out. And then you create a space where maybe a positive thought can happen. We, we are all, you are all more magnificent and amazing than you can believe. I swear to God, this is the truth because I see it in you every day. I see it in all the people that I meet. And because I am really interested in having these kinds of conversations and in loving people as much as I can and in being unconditional, for some reason, it helps people to like let go and to be more them. Um, I love it. Daniel's saying that he lets out those intrusive and angry thoughts when he's working out. That's fabulous. Go take a walk. Walk that shit out. Because we don't need it. Because it's not helping us. And did I answer any questions? No, I did not. Did I take any questions? No, I did not. I just love you guys so much. I just want us all to just feel some love and compassion for ourselves and then maybe share a little bit of that in the world. I'm going to go back. I'm going to read your comments. I promise. I always try to do that. Um, and, um, you know, answer any questions if I can. This form usually just for anybody who is here just for total fandom is generally a little bit more a heart centered conversation. Um, I am exploring whether or not I want to go back and start doing interviews on my channel with other actors and people from like the Ninja Turtle world or Halloween Town or other people out there. Um, let me know if that's something that you would want to see. I sometimes get very, I'm a cancer, so I get very crab-like sometimes. And if life is getting challenging for me, I tend to go into my shell. Um, but I am going to try to at least do this once a month. I don't know if I'm going to do it more than that. One of the ways to find out about this is go ahead and subscribe. You can hit the notifications or not. I don't, I got no skin in the game in terms of like, I'm not trying to build followers. I'm not trying to make money off of this. I'm not trying to get paid by YouTube. I don't really give a shit about any of that. I just want to connect with people. And if you want to know when I'm going to be here because I am kind of sporadic, it's a good way to do it. Or Follow me on Instagram, uh, at Judith Hogue Official. I tend to post a lot more there. At some point, I do see myself kind of moving off of social media more. Um, I will be going back into my website. Erin Halsnagel, are you on the line? Um, and um, I'm going to be probably doing a newsletter and collecting people's emails. So if for some reason I do hop out of social media, there's a way for us to still connect. Um, and so that's what's going on with me these days. Um, just really quick, where are you all? I just want to kind of, on the face of the earth, 
I know that we have uh, Jamie in Detroit. I know that we had um, uh, our beautiful friend from the Ukraine. We've got Oklahoma. We got Texas. We got Chicago. We got North Carolina. We got UK, London, Houston, Texas, Alabama, New Jersey, Wisconsin, Texas. Bay City, Oregon, South Carolina, Alberta, Canada, California, or Ontario, Illinois. Also, more love from the UK. We've got California's in the house, Colorado, Ohio, Yorkshire, UK, Florida, New York City, Costa Rica, Arkansas. Hey, for my friends in Canada, I'm going to be in Canada in September. I'm off. The Netherlands are in the house. Atlanta, more people from Costa Rica. Um, oh my gosh, I love you guys. This is the power of the interwebs, right? I'm going to post, I swear to God, Delaware is in the house. Um, New Hampshire. Hey, Jeffrey! Hi, my friend. Old friend from, from high school. Um, oh, I love this. Okay, so uh, I will be in Florida later this year. Next up, I'm going to be in Texas at Celebration, uh, Turtle Celebration at the, uh, oh God, where am I going to be? I'm going to be at the RetroCon Comic Con in Texas. I will post about this. Then I'm going to be in Regina, Canada. Then I'm going to, I'll post. I'm terrible about this. I'm a professional actor who's just not that professional. I know I should be, but I'm not. Anyway, this is 41 minutes long. This is way, okay. Yes, I will help you. I will let you know about where to put your contact information in. It will be on my website. We are rebooting the website so that we can, I'm going to probably be sending out a monthly newsletter free, Not this is not charging anybody for anything, just to connect with each other, to let you know where I am and what's going on. There'll be a schedule up there so that if I'm coming near you, we get a chance to, um, hey, zoom in your camera to get a, oh, can you not hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. If, oh, is the sound down? Oh, crap. Oh, the sound has been down the whole time. Oh, people, I'm so sorry. Sorry for anybody. I know I've got somebody who is does not have great hearing. Anyway, I love you. Yes, I'm going to do a, a Power Rangers playback soon. I love you guys so much. You Could you hear me the whole time? John, could you hear? Ah, oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Eric Rhodes, hello. All right, guys, I love you so much. I'm going to check on out of here. And uh, drop your comments. I will see you soon. I'm sending you so much love.